Hello and welcome to another episode of the Becoming You podcast. And I am so sorry if you're watching this on YouTube for the quality of the video today. Uh, my technology is not cooperating with me and my usual camera is not working. So we have this low quality camera on my computer and it's bugging the heck out of me. I kind of just seem to accept it and go with the flow. But anyway, we are doing our best. I'm doing my best. Uh, to sit with the discomfort that comes with not having things go your way. Speaking of which, today's topic is about what do I do when I have a spouse or a partner or somebody that I co-parent with that is not getting on the same plan as I am when it comes to parenting our children. I often get this um, question from clients who are on board you know, and they're doing the transformative work of becoming a conscious, peaceful parent. And yet um, their spouses haven't gotten a memo and their spouses don't want to follow or be part of the transformative work. So my clients um, end up in this world um, of being torn. And the, the thing that I often hear is, not only am I having, not only am I having to parent my own children, I feel like I'm also parenting my spouse as well because, like, I'm the gatekeeper of everything, right? I have to course correct everything that my um, co-parent does wrong, and so I really wanted to address um, this issue today because it's a very real one, and it can be really, really hard when it feels like you against the entire world, including your partner or the parent or the co-parent. So I wanted to give you some mindset perspectives and tangible things that you can do to help you co-parent more peacefully so that you're not ending up feeling exhausted and drained. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is it's really hard to control another person. You are you probably found that by, you know, trying to control your own children, right? And a lot of this podcast focuses on how do you lead your children without the need to control them? Because controlling somebody means I want things to turn out a certain way and I'm going to manipulate you um, using various tactics for you to behave in a certain way that I feel better about life, about myself, et cetera. And controlling others, it can feel, you can make you feel good in some extent because you get the outcome that you want from that person. But oftentimes it's really detrimental to a relationship. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm fighting a cold. Um, it often feels really detrimental to a relationship and it actually consumes so much of the energy that you have. Think about any time you have tried to control your own parents or your kids or a colleague or a friend, um, getting them to like you. That's a way of controlling somebody, right? You, you bend and sway and twist yourself um, and change your own behavior in the hopes that somebody else will like you. That is a form of control and manipulation. So going back to the topic of controlling your, the co-parent that you are parenting your kids with, it's really, really exhausting and draining. And the work that you need to do is to accept the fact that they're not getting on the same page as you are, and that is okay. So stop and notice where do you have the urge to control your spouse or your partner in the way they parent or any other aspect of your relationship together um, and know that the more you try to control, the more dispensive they're going to become. Now, with my clients, this looks a lot like I'm going to correct my spouse or my partner and give them constructive feedback on what they should do, what they should not do, because I know better. I'm further along on this journey than you are. Um, I'm like more awake, right? I know you might be the primary caregiver to your children in terms of disciplining, parenting, et cetera. And if you have more of a peaceful and conscious parenting and your partner has more of an authoritative um, disciplinarian, 
Um, you might believe that your way of parenting is better. And of course, I'm in the same boat as you. But we cannot shame somebody into making them believe, shame them into transformation and change. So we cannot, if you are into shaming or criticizing the way your co-parent parents, I want to please kindly, strongly urge you to stop doing that. Now that can feel really, really hard. And I'm, I will be the first one to admit it's awful watching your child be hurt emotionally. We're not talking about physical hurting, right? I hopefully you don't have a partner or spouse that hits your children because if they do, then obviously you need to step in. And I am all for that. I'm not asking you to stand aside and watch. But if it's more of the authoritarian parenting where they are yelling or shouting or shaming or blaming, telling your child that they're not good enough, et cetera, it can be really, really painful to stand aside and watch your co-parent do that. But your job is instead of expending your energy focused on correcting and yelling back or stepping in to save the day and giving, you know, criticism back to your co-parent, I want you to use that energy to talk to your child and help them process how they feel, you know, since that co-parent didn't behave very kindly. I would rather you spend your energy on focused on your child than correcting the co-parent. And here's why, as we covered in the beginning of the podcast episode, your when you spend your energy correcting someone and if they are not ready to hear that feedback, it is going to fall on deaf ears and they become immediately defensive. Think about a time that you weren't willing to hear the truth. And if somebody came along and told you the truth, you probably did everything in your power to prove that person wrong through arguing with them or being in denial or trying to find evidence as to, you know, all the times that whatever it is that they're saying, they're wrong, right? Well, that can't be right because this, this, this hasn't happened. Well, you're mistaken because you don't understand my point of view, right? How many times have you done that? There's no shame in that. When we are not ready to change and we're not ready to hear the truth, our minds cannot wrap it, its brain around a different point of view and it's not open to receiving a different point of view because it feels like you're telling me that what I'm doing is correct, which means that we feel defensive and like we're not good enough. And if you're not mature enough to receive that feedback, you immediately shut down and nothing gets through. So the same thing is happening to the co-parent. Every time you criticize your husband, your spouse, your partner, they immediately shut down and they're like, well, you know, all of a sudden you're on this journey and you believe you know better than me. Like, and it doesn't feel good to not feel good unless, unless the co-parent has said, you know what, you, you seem to be having a better response. You seem to be getting through to our child more than I am. But if I put a foot wrong or if I say the wrong thing, then you have permission to step in and do that. Okay. Unless you have that kind of overt permission, I ha do not step in and correct them. Especially when it's happening in the moment. Like if, if your partner and your child are going at it and they're playing dirty, right? Stepping in and pointing to the co-parent, hey, you're playing dirty in that moment is not only going to send that co-parent into a defensive mode, your child is hearing that now and they might be hearing you argue and bicker and that your child is immediately going to believe that it's because of them that this problem is starting to occur. That's one thing that your child is already thinking. It's my fault that this is happening. I've done something bad to make my parents fight. And number two, your children are also going to use that to their advantage by pitting you against one another as well, especially when it's something that they want. So if they know mom is super strict with screen time and she sticks to her boundaries. Well, guess what? They're immediately going to go to dad and be like, I did all of this, mom, you know, can I get screen time? And the co-parent might be like, yeah, sure, right? And your children are going to know how to use that to their advantage. And that's, that's because they're just incredibly smart human beings. 
Um, but that's another reason why you don't want to be stepping in and correcting your co-parent in the moment um, because it affects your children ultimately. The other thing that you need to focus on is not everybody is going to go at the same pace in terms of transformation and change. Everybody is on their own journey and it is your job to lead the family continuously, but it is up to everyone to choose the speed at which they follow you at. And that is a really difficult part of parenting because oftentimes we start to make these changes. We start our emotional healing journey. We start to become more calm. We start to feel more grounded and patient with our kids. We stop raising our voices. And yet we don't immediately see the ripple effect of that in our children through changed behavior, et cetera. And then we start to doubt ourselves. Like, is what I'm doing really working? Is it worth it? Because what I'm doing takes an incredible amount of work and then you're not receiving any sort of gratification through changed behavior. And, and so we want to be like, we want to, we start questioning ourselves and we want to throw in the towel. So in the same way, when you are being the leader in your family, leading the change, it's really important that you lead the change because you're holding the vision ultimately for what your family's dynamics is going to look like in the long term and stop doubting or changing or tweaking or throwing in the towel because that's instant gratification, right? Oh, it's not working. Let me just quit what I'm doing. That's instant gratification because you are addressing the discomfort that you are feeling. You're addressing the self-doubt you're feeling by quitting, right? You're not working through your discomfort and sticking to the ultimate goal, which is I want to have more unity. I want to have more peace and harmony in my family. And I'm going to do no matter whatever it takes. I'm going to be that leader and I'm going to keep leading using that vision, right? If you don't have a strong why as to why you're doing this hard work, and if the only why is, you know, I need my co-parent to fall in line and I need my kids to immediately listen to me, if you're doing it for that, that and you're not receiving the instant gratification, you're going you're gonna to want to quit. So make sure that you keep revisiting your why on what is my ultimate vision and why did I start on this journey of emotional healing? Um, and what is, you know, what is my why that's going to keep me going through dark periods of when my co-parent is questioning what I do? And when I feel the urge to correct and criticize my co-parent, like, why am I doing this, right? Because I know ultimately that is not productive. And the other thing I wanted, I'm kind of going all over the place. I, I, I'm usually a list person, but today I just wanted to kind of riff on it without structure. Um, and the reason that your spouse, partner, slash co-parent is not changing as fast as you would like them to or refusing to change is because there's a part of, there's a large part of them that's fighting the change right? Why do we normally fight change? One, we don't think the change is necessary. Uh, two, it's being forced upon us. Three, the end result scares us. Four, it's very different to what we are used to. So if your spouse was brought up in a certain way, let's say they're used to an authoritarian parenting, like they received authoritarian parenting and, you know, they are pretty confident in who they are, they might then believe that authoritarian parenting is the way to go for your own child. It's ultimately like sticking your head in the sand. And they're like, well, it worked for me, so it should work for my child. And they're not addressing the fact that the child might be very different from who the spouse is. They're not taking into account personality. They're not even assuming, you know, that my child is very different from who I am. They're, they're just assuming that the, the world we live in is exactly the same as the world that I grew up in. They're not taking all of that into account. And like I said, you know, everyone goes at their own pace. So even though you have awoken to all of this facts, your co-parent has not, and it is not your job to help them catch up. Okay? So your co-parent is shaped by their past 
and they're having a hard time dealing and confronting the truth of what is going on today, which is, you know, the connection to my child is being ruptured. I am causing my child to doubt themselves. I am causing my child to have lower confidence, et cetera. Again, I'm going to validate what you are going through. I, it is really hard to stand aside and watch your child, like literally experience those mini fractures that are happening within their emotional psyche. Like dad thinks I'm not good enough. Dad thinks that no matter what I do, it does not measure up to his expectations. It's really, really hard to watch your child experience that in real time and not want to jump in and be the one that rescues. So your job is to feel grounded in that moment, take care of yourself, validate the experience you're going through, which is it's really hard to watch my child go through this. I wish that, you know, my co-parent would get the help that they need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Validate the emotional discomfort that you are feeling in that moment, which might be, I feel ashamed that I'm not able to save my child. You know, I, I'm blaming my spouse for doing this to my child, whatever the ex emotional experience you might be having. Observe that, have compassion and kindness for yourself, and then be there for your child after to process it. So again, you're always doing the work within yourself. And then have the conversation after everyone has cooled down with your co-parent to talk about what happened there. Are you open to having a conversation to how we can do this differently, right? You're not jumping in there, pointing fingers and being like, well, you shouldn't have done that. This is how you should have done it again. That is not effective communication. That is not conducive to cooperation. And what you're really seeking here is to lay the groundwork for cooperation and collaboration. And that doesn't happen if you induce shame and point fingers and do it through blame and causing pain and suffering for that person. If you want to be the leader in your family, you focus on yourself first. In my kids' school, they have this saying, which I love, which is, focus on yourself because you know kids all day in classrooms they'll be like miss he did this he's not doing his work like he's distracted etc 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 and so the teachers in the school really have this thing where they say focus on yourself or, or worry about yourself and not about others so worry about yourself and how am I leading my children and not force your co-parent to catch up with you. The final thing that I want to say here is that as much as it feels like it's out of control, you have to do the work of accepting the fact that it is, it does feel like out of control. The more you try to control things, the more tempted you're going to be to point fingers at your spouse. Okay. The final, final thing I want to say is oftentimes it can feel like, oh my gosh, we disagree on everything, right? With your co-parent. We can't seem to agree on anything. We have no common ground. He, he or she is not on board to the way I do things. It can get very easy. It can be very easy to get sucked into that drama. And what I want to encourage you to do is to have a conversation with your co-parent about what are the most important values to us, right? So if that value is, I want peace in our home, I want harmony, I want us all to feel emotionally connected, I want our children to respect um, each other and us, right? Most of the time, co-parents have similar values because regardless of what kind of a relationship you have today, you are probably attracted to one another and decided to build a life together because you shared common values. And you most likely have common values and dreams and vision for your children as well. And so focus on those common values before you start fighting or disagreeing about how are we going to build that life, right? So if the common value you share is I want 
peace and harmony in our family, then your spouse might believe, well, peace and harmony comes when our children listen to us, no questions asked. And you might have, you know, an idea of we build peace and harmony through collaboration, right? We all ask one another what it is that we desire and we maybe make a vote, et cetera. It is hard to maybe collaborate with your spouse to figure out how can we build more peace and harmony. But starting with common shared values is actually leads to more productive conversations, right? And ask and brainstorming on, well, if, you know, if you want more peace in our family, um, what would that look like in terms of daily life, right? Is that all of us having dinner around the table? Is that all of us like spending weekends together? What does that peace and harmony look like? If it is nobody yells at one another, right? Great. Let's figure out how we do that because then it's not just about our kids not yelling at us. It's also about us not yelling at them, right? So when you start to build, that's, that's how you build a foundation instead of just going straight to the you yell at our kids too much, right? Well, your spouse might be yelling because they feel disrespected. So then their core value might be that, you know, I want to feel respected in my house. Okay, great. How do you, how, how do our kids need to behave so that you feel respected? Could be, well, I don't want them to yell at me or I want them to come sit at the dinner table as soon as they are called. Okay. Or I want them to keep the house tidy um, because I feel respected when I come into my house and everyone's put the stuff away, wh whatever it might be, right? Okay, awesome. How can we put up systems and structures in place so that you're not constantly having to remind our kids to pick up their stuff or to come sit at the dinner table, right? How, so working backwards is really important instead of just fo hyper-focused on the things that are going wrong. This requires collaboration. This requires both of you to feel calm. And this, this conversation needs to happen outside of the moment where the meltdown is happening or the disagreement is happening. Because in that moment, when you are arguing or disagreeing, like the front part of your brain, which is where the flight or fight mode resides, goes into activation. And we're, when you're in fight or flight mode, you're not in collaboration mode. So it's really important that this happens when everyone's calmed down and you know exactly how to guide the conversation without shaming, without criticizing. And this is why learning effective communication is really, really important and, and being really clear on what your values are and also working on self-acceptance and acceptance in general of where I'm like, of letting go of control and the need and the urge to want to control somebody else to make you feel better in the situation. So I hope that helps you. If you ever wondered, you know, the question of my spouse or my partner is not on board with the way we want to parent. So therefore, like, maybe it's not worth embarking on. I want to discourage you from that thought because yes, of course, life is going to be a lot easier if both parents or on the same ship in terms of how do we parent our children? Because the more consistent you are and coherent the parenting is, the better it is for our children, right? If both parents are on board, the way, in, the way they communicate, the way they implement boundaries, you know, all of that, of course, it makes life a whole lot easier and it's less confusing for your children. But not everybody is blessed right now with that kind of a co parent. So instead, what you need to work on is being the leader for your family and making peace with the fact that your spouse or partner or co-parent is not yet on the same journey as you are. But I promise you that the more you lead, the more solidified you feel as to why am I on this mission for my children, the, the more like the changes are going to stick. And trust me when I say for your children, of course, the best case scenario is for both parents to be on the same page. But if that's not possible and available for you, then it's better for your child to have one parent, right, who is on the journey for peaceful, like collaborative, conscious parenting. You don't, don't be the 
individual that throws in the towel and says, it's too hard to not only parent my own kids, but to bring my spouse on board. So I don't want to try it all. So don't do that. Be the leader that starts to break the generational trauma in your family. And I promise you, when you need, others will follow, right? It's just a matter of how long is it going to take? They're either going to rise up to meet you where you're at, or they're going to fall away. It, I am, I don't, I'm not undermining the amount of effort and energy it's going to take. At, at times, it is going to feel like it's me against the whole world. And I so empathize with you if you feel that way. But I promise you for your children, they desperately need you to lead. So I hope you enjoyed um, this podcast episode. It was a very complex, deep issue. And coming very soon, the Grounded Parent community is going to be going live inside of Facebook. So if you're not a Facebook person, I sincerely apologize, but I hope you're encouraged to become more active on Facebook, if only to access this community that's going to be coming soon. Inside of this community, there's going to be incredible resources to help you become a grounded parent, meaning there's going to be live breathwork sessions every month. There's going to be live Q&A every month. So every month we're going to focus on one specific topic and all parents are welcome where we will meet on Zoom. We will talk about a specific, you know, the topic will be designed and you will talk about the challenges that you face around that topic and you will get coaching from me. But this is really more of a community get together. Sometimes it just feels really good to share the challenges, what's going on in our life and hear about where everyone else is who's having those same challenges. And then you feel less alone. You feel more uplifted, inspired. Um, and we even discuss solutions, right? Like what's helped me get through it? How have I dealt with it? And so rather than hearing just from singular me, you'll get to hear from all different parents. So we're going to have those monthly Q&As and there'll also be a private podcast. And the link to that private podcast will only be shared inside of that Facebook group where I'm going to be coaching um, parents around, you know, one parent every episode around a very single parenting topic, the challenge that they have. So I want this community to be an incredible resource for you so that you feel less alone in your parenting journey to become the grounded parent. So if that sounds like something you want, keep your ears peeled. I know I teased you about it last week. I promise you I'm working hard behind the scenes on creating this and it will be coming to you soon. I love you guys so much. Take care.